What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Opinionated Off Topic. Today, I'm with Carlos Mojica, co-founder, co-owner of Opinionated Media. I'm Cam Theory, co-founder, co-owner of Opinionated Media. Today, I'm with Michael Anderson, founder of Boot Up Customs. Dope, dope shoes, cleats, like doing it all. He's got clothing we'll talk about here soon, but met him like a, a month ago, kind of through the internet, you know, through some mutuals and then uh, linked up with him in person and just like creative, like minds, like I was like, I got to interview this guy. Like, we got to get him on our platform, collab with him in the future, and work with him. So excited to do this interview. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank you for coming on, taking time out your day. Um, just give a little backstory. Where are you from? How you got started to what you're doing now? Yeah. Uh, so I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Um, I went to LSU, and then I moved to Denver for a couple years. And then in December, I moved to Austin. Um, but I think I think we linked on Instagram. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, okay. I followed you because Austin had posted one of your uh, like something you you were doing. I think you gave cleats to somebody, and I was like, "Oh, this dude looks dope." I just followed him, and I was like, "You followed me back," and I was like, "All right, I'm a DM." Yeah, it's up. crazy, crazy yeah. how that works these nah, days. Not for real. Yeah, you know, I mean, DM we, goes a long way. Yeah, yeah. We probably would have met at Collective at some point anyway, but yeah. but um, growing up in Baton Rouge, what was life like? Is it just all just straight LSU? Nothing like nothing else. Yeah, I mean, dude, honestly, my, my life revolved around LSU sports for so long. Um, my grandfather had, had tickets. I think his dad had tickets. Uh, we've been going to every LSU game since I can remember. Uh, football, baseball, basketball, women's basketball. Like, we we doing it all. Mm-hmm. That's fire. I was supposed to go to the one 2020. Um, it was me, me, him, me, him, and both of our dads are going to take a road trip to go to the the Texas versus LSU game um, in Baton Rouge, but then COVID happened. So mm-hmm. I was wishing we happen. got that one. Yeah. yeah cool. But I went to the one here, which was dope. He could have gone, but yeah, you know, he, I, he I just chose not to. <laughs> yeah. He sold. Um, but coming out party for them boys that year. Yeah. It, uh, it was fun. But um, so basically, just live in Baton Rouge your whole life. Diehard LSU fan. Do you end up going to LSU or no? Yeah, I went to yeah. LSU. Yeah. Went to LSU. I got an engineering degree at LSU. Don't really use it anymore, but you know, nah, not many people use their degree that they graduated with, yeah. so that's okay. Um, yeah. And then you just move on to to Colorado. Yep. So I moved to Denver. I think in uh, in 2019. How, how was that? Because that's like a Dude, Den- Denver's hot to just straight cold. Yeah. Denver's a, a crazy place, man. Um, when it, whenever I moved to Austin. I didn't really want to leave. I mean, mm-hmm. the, the mountains are incredible. The mm-hmm. weather's incredible. Um, I like skiing. Like the summer's honestly better than the winter. Um, but moved here for work and, uh, and glad, glad that I did move here. I've fallen in love with Austin. Yeah. Yeah. Cause see, I went to go visit he went to play football in Colorado. Mm-hmm. He was in, um, I was in Durango. Durango. So I was like six hours. Yeah. yeah. And then it was just beautiful. Cause yeah. his school was like inside like the mountain. The mountain. Yeah, and then you look outside and from his um, apartment, and it was just mountain. It was yeah. beautiful. So I don't blame you for not wanting to leave. And plus, just like the the pro market there, like you got the Nuggets, the the Rockies, the Broncos, the Avalanche. You got an MLS team. You got like four or five pro teams there. Then you got CU right there. So I can understand. Yeah, well, and that was the thing, right? That's why it was a big risk for me to come here. So, you know, I look at Austin, and, and I, I moved here for a job. Um, and then, but I, I look at Austin, and they have Austin FC, but that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's crazy because I've actually fallen in love with with Austin. Uh, it's uh, big jobs, big money, big fun, but then small town networking. Mm-hmm. You know, like similar to how like we linked up, and then mm-hmm. like Collective, and um, you know, once I got linked with Collective, and I guess we'll talk about that in a second. But uh, you know, now all the all the guys come to Austin to train in the off season. Mm-hmm. So not not only do I just have one team, I've got dudes from a bunch of teams. Mm-hmm. So that's been that's been really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's the crazy thing about Austin. It's so big, but yet it's also at the same time so small. Yeah, like that's that's the that's also the beauty of it is when you're doing stuff like this is it's easy to connect with people. Yeah, and, and I'll go back and just like give like a little bit more backstory on on how I started doing art because that's you know that's always the first qu- question that I get right, um, and you know I tried to think back about all the random events that happened that like led me to where I'm at right. But I think the easier way to describe it is, you know, it's kind of like the universe conspired to put me on this path, mm-hmm. right? Like I said, I went to every single LSU home football game since I was nine months old. Like we went to every sport. My life revolved around it. I grew up painting with my grandmother when I was a kid every summer in Lafayette. Um, and I just wanted to be around the program. Like I, I, lo- I wanted to play for it, couldn't do that. Um, so I just, I wanted to be close to it. And I think just you know, following the things that I, that I love to do and just saying yes to opportunities and whatever, 
um, like I said, the universe had a plan for me to do all that stuff. And that's kind of what brought me here. How was it like, I guess, well, what you, what sport did you play? I played basketball. You played basketball. So how, how was it like growing up and like you not, I guess, in the force, like once you got older, you like realized like, uh, I'm not gonna be able to play for LSU. Uh, but like <laughs> you were like a painter, but like painting's not like um, a popular thing. Like how, how, how was it? Well, and for I you, like just to like, oh, this is my art, because it's also not easy to just show art because it's very like judgy. Right. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, I, I don't have a lot of shame. Like I, I've, I've never been like the artist that like would do something and not put it out. Like even whenever I first started, like it wasn't that good, but I thought it was elite and mm -hmm. I was going to put it out because I was proud of it. Yeah. You know, uh, but I realized early on I wasn't going to be playing sports for mm -hmm. a living. Right. So it didn't, it didn't take me that long. Um, but yeah, just been been cool to combine the two. That's fire. Yeah. So I guess when you started doing art and um, what was like your first form of art, just painting or drawing or. So the the earliest memory I have of it was actually at my grandmother's house when I was like seven or eight. Mm -hmm. And I did this. You could call it a drawing on like Microsoft Paint. And my grandmother was very religious. Mm -hmm. uh, she. She has like a, a painting of Mother Teresa that looks like a photograph. I mean, she was That's unbelievable. Crazy. Now she's uh, she's old now, so she, her her hands shake a little bit. She can't do it the same mm -hmm. way. But she was insanely talented. And in a day of social media and other stuff, she could have done a lot more with it. Mm -hmm. But I remember I did. There's like a it's a Microsoft Paint drawing, if you will, of Jesus like praying on a pr praying on a hill. That's like the earliest like mm -hmm. art thing that I remember. But then every summer that I'd go back, you know, my parents would drop us off for a couple weeks. Um, and I would, wasn't really looking forward to going to the grandparents' house, mm -hmm. but I was looking forward to going up in the art studio and just watching her paint and being around it and just, you know, messing around and learning. Um, so are you painting, like, even, like, through these whole years, elementary school, middle school, high school, college, or is there, like, a, do you ever take a break at some point? So I took art class in, in middle school and in high school, um, but actually, I didn't get accepted into, so I took art one, two, and three, mm -hmm. and then we have a four that you have to apply to. I didn't get accepted because I was kind of bad. <laughs> I, was, I would talk a lot in class and like whatever uh, else. Yeah. So I ended up taking like a, an extra year of French, like a foreign language, instead of the art class. Um, and honestly, like I went to a, a college prep high school where it's like doctor, lawyer, engineer, mm -hmm. right? They don't really push people towards the arts. So I never... And, and that's what's crazy about this whole thing is I never in my wildest dreams thought that I'd be doing art mm -hmm. as as for a living, right? Or that I'd get to the point, you know, where I'm mm -hmm. at with it right now. Um, because it, it, I just wasn't exposed to it, right? Mm -hmm. I, I had no, I didn't, I wasn't going to go to art school, yeah. right? Like I didn't, I, I'm financially motivated, right? So I didn't think that that was something I could ever do. Mm -hmm. When was it that you like first put brush or pen, mark or whatever you want to call it on shoe? Yeah, so I've been I've been really lucky um, to have really cool inspirations around me like my whole life. Um, Louisiana has a lot of talented people. Mm -hmm. Baton Rouge has like a pretty cool art scene actually, and and there was a guy Jacob Zumo, uh, insane artist out of Baton Rouge, um, one of my favorites like of all time. And when when I was in either. I think it was like into high school, early college. He had he did a painting of Mac Miller, and okay. I wanted to buy it. That's fine because it was fucking sick. And uh, but it was I don't know. Let's say it was twenty five hundred bucks. Yeah, I was eighteen art, and broke. Art is crazy right? expensive. Um, and shoot, you can't get his stuff for twenty five twenty five hundred <laughs> now. You know, but I didn't I didn't have money to buy that. So I said, all right, I'm gonna start painting again. Like, why not? I can at least have cool stuff hanging up in my apartment. So in. Uh, you know, I'd mess around with it here and there. And a lot of times I wouldn't even finish something, but it was just like something I wanted to do. Um, and then in 2014, I did a painting of uh, for Leonard Fournette of him and his daughter. And I just did it. And then he's sitting in the quad one day on campus. And I just walk up to him. I was like, yo, I got a painting of you and your daughter. Do you want it? He was like, yeah. So I went over to his place with my little brother and gave it to him. And uh, I remember, I remember like we were out one night and I'm, walking with a couple of my buddies and like, dude, he, he put it as the, as his banner on his Twitter page. Like, dude, that's, that's, fire. Like, that's, that's fire. pretty cool, dude. Yeah. Like Leonard Fournette is one of my favorite LSU athletes of all time. I did one painting that I finished and I gave it to Leonard. That's pretty cool. 
but then you know life and whatever gets in the way right it wasn't i was in engineering school i wasn't trying to do that yeah um and then in uh 2018 um i'd been painting a little bit still hadn't really put a lot of stuff out because i wasn't taking it that seriously um but i'm a big russ fan the rapper russ Mm -hmm. um you know he's a he's a i take a lot of inspiration from music Mm -hmm. and he's a guy that you know, anybody can rap about money and girls and drugs or whatever, but he raps about like self belief and self help and, you know, going for your dreams. And he put a, a lot of words into my head that I had had there, but I didn't, I didn't have a way. They were all jumbled up and he put them in a straight line, you know? So um, I had the idea. I was like, I'm going to do a painting and I'm going to give it to Russ. So I made this painting. Um, you know, like looking back at the Leonard Fournette one, wasn't all that good. Yeah. The Russ painting is incredible. It's, it's unreal. Um, and I, and I was going to bring it to his show in Houston and just hope for the best. And a few days before we go out to Houston, I'm going through Instagram, like looking up his management team and whatever. I uh, emailed his manager, Milan, and literally five minutes later, he sent me an email back, meet and greet passes, and he's like, yeah, let's bring the painting to him. That's fire. That's fire. Oh. And um, then I get there, and the painting had just meant so much to me because of what his music means, and then... I'm starting to think like I actually want to do this. Um, that he signed it, and I still have it, and that's like my prized possession. Um, but that was that was the proof of concept, right? That was when I was like, okay, so painting number two, you just met your favorite rapper of all time. Mm-hmm. Like, let's let's take this seriously. Went from meeting your favorite athlete of all, one of your favorite athletes of all time to your favorite uh, painter. So when was it when we got the backstory? So when you moved to Austin, how long before it was just like? you make this your full-time job. Like, this is what I'm doing. Here we are. Yeah. So, um, that if you had asked me six months ago, if I was going to be a full-time artist at, at any point, I'd have told you, I'd have told you yes, because I'm a confident guy and I want to will that into existence. But I think deep down, I wasn't sure, you know, because it's hard to make money in art. Like Mm -hmm. it's really difficult. Like you got to, not only do you have to make incredible things, but you got to find somebody to buy it at the price point, mm-hmm. right? And it's a lot of times it's expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, so in, right after I did the Russ painting, uh, there's a guy, Skylar Mays, who played basketball for LSU, right now plays for the Trailblazers. Mm-hmm. Um, there was an LSU basketball player that he grew up with, that was, he was best friends with, that got shot and killed at a, a, a homecoming party, right? He was like breaking up a fight and he got shot. Mm-hmm. That was like a big deal for the LSU community. And back when I was at LSU, I, I tried to do cleats with Odell because I'd seen people on Instagram, mm-hmm. whatever. But LSU, there wasn't NIL. LSU nixed it, right? Mm-hmm. So then I saw that as an opportunity of like, okay, I got to do these for Skylar. We have some mutual friends. Like, this is like a big deal. So I did a memorial cleat for Wade Sims, who was killed, that Skylar got to wear for the last game when they won the SEC, SEC championship. And then... Uh, Wade's parents were there to like cut down the nets and stuff. So then I realized like, wow, not only is, am I doing art and not only is it with LSU, but like this matters to the community as well, right? Like I can, I can make an impact doing it. So from that point on, I was set on at some point I'm going to do art full time. Um, and then, you know, I had a, I had a really good job that I quit like two weeks ago. Uh, and I'm blessed because I was at, we did really well the last couple years. Mm-hmm. And so like financially, I'm in an, a decent place where I could do it. But just, you know, I'm 31 years old. Um, LSU is the hottest brand in college sports. Um, I'm now, like I said, six months ago, I wasn't sure. I'm now certain that this is a, a multi-million dollar brand. Now I got to go all in and get it there. Yeah. 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 And I mean, like you said, just the impact, like touching people's lives from your art and the products, like, the feeling of that, you know, you can't put a price on it. And I'm guessing now, you know, obviously you're doing art. Um, you did, you did like another painting for like Kid Leroy or was that just like more of like a personal piece? Yeah. So I got to bring that to him at his concert in Denver. Um, actually I, I, so I'm a big believer in like manifestation, Mm -hmm. right? That's like, that's huge for me. I send a lot of DMS that I know these guys will never see. Mm -hmm. Right. So athletes and, and musicians that I like or celebrities, whatever, like, hey, we're going to do some art one day. And then when we do it, I'm going to show you this DM. So I DM'd him in 2020. It's like, hey, dude, you're, you're a legend. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to do a painting for you at, one, at some point. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then got to bring it to him at a show in Denver. And that was pretty cool because I got to show him the DM. 
That's fire. Yeah, that's did fire. he like it? Oh yeah. Was, yeah. yeah. Did, did you give it to him, him or did, was it like the same thing with Russ? He signed well, it. And so, he kept it? no. So he's he's on he was on tour, so they couldn't bring it on like the tour bus. But then I like linked with his manager and uh, got numbers and whatever. So I'm gonna go deliver it to him. Yeah. Yeah. That's fire. That's fire. That's fire. So I guess you go from making the paintings and kind of going in that realm. You did the cleats. Um, you, fast forward. Did you do any cleats for anyone in Denver? I saw that you did something with, like, Patrick Sertain, but, like, I guess who were some of the athletes you worked with out there when you lived there? Yeah, so, actually, a good buddy of mine, Deontay Spencer, uh, he's from Louisiana. I mean, Louisiana people stick together. It's mm-hmm. crazy. Um, you know, through hurricanes and all that other stuff. Mm-hmm. But Deontay Spencer played at McNeese in Louisiana, and then he was playing for the Broncos, and we had some mutual friends. So I just hit him up, and I was like, hey, let's do a pair of cleats. And then at the Broncos games, it's cool. So – after the game, friends and family go on the field and they wait for the players to come out so they can go home. So I'm out there waiting with like his girlfriend and his family and you know, like Von Miller walks by and then Patrick Sertain walks by, Justin Simmons. So I'm like, well, I'm just going to go talk to these guys and get their info and like do some more cleats. Mm-hmm. So I uh, got to chop it up with a bunch of the players and then got to work with Patrick and uh, a couple other guys. So I uh, got pretty plugged with the Broncos at one point. Which again was you know a reason that I was a little bit nervous about leaving, mm-hmm. but uh, I love Denver, man. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's not it's not a bad place. Yeah, it's not a bad place. It's at like all. a it would because I haven't been there, but I've heard nothing but great things about it. Is it like a mini Austin? So it's just an Austin with mountains. Honestly. Yeah, that's yeah. What it, it's all it is. Austin with mountains, like it's smaller, but the vibe is very similar. Like Austin, Portland, like all those kind of similar. Uh, a lot of people that I met in Denver. Was like I was choosing between Austin and Denver. A lot of people I've met here were like I was choosing between mm-hmm. Austin and Denver. So mm-hmm. that's fire. Um, so when you move here and you're still doing all these cleats, uh, have did you do anything for? Well, this was why you're, you're why you're in Denver. But did you do anything for the Natty team? LSU baseball. Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, man, that that was incredible. I got to go to Omaha this year. Was that your first time? Uh, second no. time. Second so, time. I want to go back so bad. I went in 2017 when we played Florida in the finals mm-hmm. and we and we lost. And actually, uh, in 2017, it was me, and then my little brother, who's six years younger than me. So he was 18. He was he was going into his freshman year of college. It was me, my brother, and five of his buddies. And I was like the chaperone, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. <laughs> you know how that went. Yeah. Um, and then we we lost, right? And it was it was it was heartbreaking. So that same group. Went back this year. Um, but, yeah, I actually, I, I linked with Dylan Cruz. Um, I've done some LSU baseball projects in the past, like Jaden Hill, a couple other guys. Um, and then last year I linked with Dylan Cruz, um, and we did some cleats. And then we did some more this year. Uh, this year I also worked with Paul Skeens, Trey Morgan, and Tommy White. Mm-hmm. So, like, the big it's four. Not some bad yeah. guys to work with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, that man, that was that was so special. Yeah. Um, a lot of a lot of times baseball guys get a bad rap. You know, they're kinda they can yeah. you know you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Right? This team was different, right? This team, as great of a baseball team they were, they were better dudes. And I think that's a big reason why they won. I mean, they were obviously really talented, but I can I can't say enough about what those four guys have done for me and for my brand. I mean, I, I collab post with them on Instagram, right? Like I posted a reel today with Dylan Cruz for our last project. Mm-hmm. We've we've done multiple collab posts on Instagram, and that's what it's all about, yep. right? It's about the relationships, and it's about getting getting the eyes that the work deserves. Mm-hmm. And it, I can't do that by myself. Mm-hmm. And I'm at the point now where, because of guys like Dylan, and because of Tommy and Trey, and Paul, I'm not doing cleats anymore. If if the athlete isn't going to be as involved or as locked in with it as I am. So mm-hmm. if they're not going to collab post with me, then I'm not going to do it. Yeah, for sure. Because like we we're doing this together. Like mm-hmm. we're a team. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's about building that relationship and that trust and mm-hmm. um, you know, something that you can you can build on and work work towards and get better together, you know. Um this is off topic, but since you were there, is that number real for the jello shots? Oh yeah. I yes. Yeah, that's what we were talking about. Yeah, that, that's yes, just crazy. That's real. What was it like? It was like five K. Y'all were in the fives, right? Yeah, you're like five K. It was like eight K. It, it, it was more, crazy. I think it was more than that. Yeah. It was almost fifty. No, yeah, it was I think yeah. it was way oh, more yeah. than that. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was like forty eight. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It was, yeah. But that is real. Yeah. yeah. That is insane. That's crazy. Well, and shout out to you know, my, my guy Todd Graves, the guy that owns Canes. Um, good friends with his son. He was over there. He bought, I don't know, 
five thousand of them or something. <laughs> and then uh, one of the lawyers in Baton Rouge, Gordon McKernan, bought like eight thousand eight hundred eighty-eight of them. Oh my goodness! But even without that, we we spanked everybody. And they went up too. They were like, they used to be like three bucks, and they went up to five. Bucks. Five bucks. And I did the math. I was like, bro, bro they're making <laughs> crazy money. From that, from yeah, that. but it's actually, it's cool because out of the five dollars, they donate. I think one or two dollars to the food bank of the team. Then they don- donate another dollar to the local food bank. So they're still making a little bit of money on it, but not like the not like not what like the, the number says. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it really is more of like a charity thing. Yeah. That's, that's fire. fire. That's good. That's good. Have you yeah. uh have you thought about doing anything like with charity with your work and stuff? Yeah, and you know, I've done I've done a bunch of uh like auctions uh-huh. um to raise money for various things, whether it be charity or like LSU women's basketball. Um, did a fundraising event and they auctioned off a pair of customs that went for like $7,500, right? So I've done stuff like that. And then also um, My Cause, My Cleats. So week 13 every year in mm. the uh, in the NFL season, all the players wear custom cleats. They pick a charity. So I've done several of those. Um, doing a lot of those this year, hopefully with the Dreamer Foundation. Yeah. So with Austin fired. and the Dreamer guys. Yeah. Um, so I've been looking forward to that. And um, you know, like like I said earlier, it's I realized early on that this can make a difference, not just, you know, me doing art, whatever, but make a difference in the community as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's um the cleats going back to the baseball team, but the cleats you the Nola cleats for Trey, those those were yours? Mm-hmm. Those are fire. I, I like those a lot. Thank those you. are fire. Because yeah. uh did how did I see them? Did ESPN post them? They might have during the so game. Like during the game, up. they they got some close ups for sure. Yeah, I think yeah, because I think I, I saw it on ESPN's um, Twitter or something like that. Because yeah. during the game, they did yeah. a close up, but like look at Trey Morgan's custom cleats. Those are yours. Yeah, those, those are, are mine. fire, bro. And so I, I did the cruise missile ones for Dylan. I saw those. The tanks for Tommy, uh, and then the the case signs for Paul Skeens. And actually, I did two pairs for Paul this year. And uh, the first one was uh, Air Force themed. It was like digital camo. And then on the inside uh, panel of each cleat were the initials and number of two former Air Force baseball players that got killed in service. Mm-hmm. Um, and Paul's an unbelievable dude. Um, so it's cool to, like I said, you know, honor something that's bigger than me, mm-hmm. bigger than custom cleats or whatever else. Um, but with the baseball team, I mean, what a ride. And, you know, I've been accepted into the LSU baseball family at this point. Everybody was so great to me and so supportive. Um but got to see some iconic moments in the cleats, right? Um, Paul Skeens with like 15 strikeouts. Dylan Cruz in the cruise missile cleats hits a home run uh, to bring us back against Oregon State in the regional. Uh, Tommy White, right, um, just went crazy. And then Clay, act- uh, sorry, Trey actually wore uh, the cleats the entire postseason. So from regional, super regional, World Series finals. He wore them every game. He's like, dude, I'm not taking these off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he's a baller. I so, like watching him play. Yeah, yeah. So that was, and then that he had the the game saving play against Wake Forest. Yep. Right. I mean, that's yeah. iconic. Yep. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But yeah, it, it was it was cool just seeing all those plays. The guys wearing my cleats. I mean, if you had told me that five years ago, I'd say you're crazy. Mm-hmm. Right. So, um, you know, really felt like I was I was part of the part of the program. You know, it was. Everybody was was so amazing and supportive, and um, definitely excited to build off of that with those guys. That's got to be a dream come true because, like you said, growing up in LSU, going all these baseball games, football games, basketball games, and it's like these guys are wearing your cleats mm-hmm. and doing crazy things, and the biggest moment wearing something you made. So that's got to be surreal. Yeah, it's special, man, and and I think that like. It, if you ask me, like, there's a lot of guys doing cleats, mm-hmm. right? And if you ask me, what's different about me and how do I separate myself? There are guys that paint better than me, right? Um, but what they can't do, what they can't recreate is the last 30 years of my life as a diehard LSU mm-hmm. fan. They can't capture that the same way that I can for the LSU guys. Yep. Yeah. Yep. How much easier... Has it been since NIL has been a thing for you to get in contact with just the athletes in general and then be able to also give them stuff? Because you mentioned Odell earlier, but they're like, LSU said, no, you can't do that. So, like, how much easier has it been to doing that? Yeah, NFL, uh, sorry, NIL has been life-changing for me. 
Um, just from uh, the microscope isn't as heavy as far as what they're doing, right? Mm-hmm. Because they can make money now, mm-hmm. right? They also have money so mm-hmm. they can purchase the cleats from me. Um, I'm trying to get more and more involved with NIO. Um, and, you know, let's say that I, I partner with uh, one of the law firms at LSU that, that does um, NIL stuff with LSU. The cleats can be a pa- part of the package that mm-hmm. they give to the player. So instead mm-hmm. of the player having to pay me, then the, then the corporate yeah, the is paying, paying me, me, right? Yeah. Which Smart. is obviously really good for yeah. me. So I want to get as, as involved with NIL as possible. And then another thing is I'm, I'm going to be putting out NIL products or projects with the players to help us both make money. Mm-hmm. So not only am I like able to do art with them, but now it can help their business grow as well. So then everybody wins. Yeah. You know? Right. So, I mean, NIL is, is awesome. Yeah. Now, what, what's been like your take on obviously working and building LSU and what you were saying, um, trying to get as involved with the program as possible, just like kind of forcing your way in there. So I guess getting your roots down with LSU, what has been like your process on like working with other colleges, if you are, or like athletes that aren't at LSU? Yeah. So obviously the, the ones at LSU are the ones that are the, the most special to me mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And that, and that's, I, I really could build the entire business mm-hmm. around Louisiana and LSU mm-hmm. and do, do great things. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, living in Austin, I want to do stuff in Austin, mm-hmm. right? I, I love being here. I want, I want to, um, you know, become a person in the city, right? And one way for me to do that is to work with UT. That's obvious. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, as, you know, I, I get a lot of the, I get relationship with the, play, with the players when they're in college, and then we build on that as they go, and mm-hmm. so we grow together. Mm-hmm. Texas obviously has a lot of great athletes. They have a lot of great people, so it, that's just kind of a no-brainer. Um, I worked with Patrick Sartain, who played at Bama. Mm-hmm. Am I going to do any cleats for Bama football? Probably not, right, <laughs> <laughs> being yeah. honest. Yeah. But I, and, and then I'll definitely pick and choose. It's really just finding guys whose values align with me and who want – to work with me and want to be invested in it with me. Mm-hmm. I was going to ask you that. How was it doing? Cleats for a rival. Well, and he was in the pros already so, at this point. Yeah, but he's, yeah. he's, the, he's the Louisiana guy, too. Yeah, yeah he, he is. is. Yeah, he is. He is. Yeah. No, he is. No, because like you said, like we were talking off camera, just, you know, working with not only people that want to do stuff with you, but like you said, like kind of going back to the collaboration. Because even for us, in a way, like we'll do podcasts or whatever with people. And like we're trying to like benef- mutually like grow together, help each other out. But it's like at the end of the day, you still need to like do stuff that is going to kind of propel like what you're trying to do forward to make it more realistic and long term and kind of grow what you're doing. Um, guess who are some uh, um, like I guess who are all the big names if you haven't mentioned additional athletes at LSU that you worked with? Yeah, um, Jamar Chase is a big one, right? And you know I saw him at Collective mm-hmm. the other day, so that was pretty cool. Uh, looking forward to doing some more cleats with Jamar. Obviously, the the bucket list project is Joe Burrow, um, and actually, uh, I'm working on it. So uh, hopefully, not 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 too distant future, yeah. we'll be doing some cleats for Burrow. Yeah, it's not um, not too hard but, to get. But at, at this point, um, you know, I'm I'm so connected at LSU that I get to pretty much pick and choose who mm-hmm. I want to work with, right? Like mm-hmm. I'm working with Jaden Daniels, the quarterback mm-hmm. of the football team, Harold Perkins, mm-hmm. linebacker for the football mm-hmm. team. Um, I'm doing some really big time projects with women's basketball, uh, who they just won the national championship mm-hmm. as well, mm-hmm. right? They're, in my opinion, they're going to go back to back. Yeah, they're they cold. Should, they're right? cold, bro. I mean, they just added Haley Van Lith. Mm-hmm. So I have a huge project with LSU women's basketball in the works, and really, I mean, the main thing is because it's not that I I've gotten resistance mm-hmm. from certain powers that be at LSU, mm-hmm. right? Um, mostly on like the sponsorship money making side, right? I'm just the kind of person. So the job that I quit, I was a, I was a sales rep in the solar industry. It was door to door. We were knocking doors, and I've taken that attitude from the doors. I just knock on doors. I beat the doors down and they let mm-hmm. me in. Right. So if I get a no, it's like okay, that's fine. I'm gonna get a yes at some point. Mm-hmm. So that's really what I try to do is just be consistent, be persistent. And then just be undeniable, right? Just put out fire shit. And if I put out fire shit, like, if you build it, they will come. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is there a big difference between 
doing like a custom cleat and a custom shoe. So, the, so like a basketball shoe versus a football cleat. Yeah, the the prep work is different. Mm-hmm. So it's it's all about the prep work for cleats because like they go out there and they they rough those things up, mm-hmm. right? So it's all about the prep work. Um, if you want everything to stay and last, and it's good for it's bad for business if it doesn't last, mm-hmm. right? Um, it's less intense or intensive for shoes that somebody's going to wear. I don't do as many of those. I do have a few things that are coming out soon um, that are just for someone to wear that's not uh, an athlete that wears cleats. Um, and then I do a lot of trophy room stuff for that as well. So not as much stuff that people are going to wear, but for LSU women's basketball, we're doing a, a Jordan 1 to go in the trophy room. So the prep work is, is a lot less for that because nobody's going to be wearing it. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes gotcha. a lot of sense. Um, so obviously, like, he just asked you about the prep work for cleats and shoes. Uh, you just went out to the surgeon in L.A. Um, take us through not only how you found that, but also got connected and then kind of just take us through your experience out there. Yeah. Shout out to to Dom, the, the shoe surgeon and everybody at Surgeon Academy in L.A. That was an, a life changing experience. Um, I That's been so I do I do a vision board. Um, you know, I have my goals written on my mirror. And that's been on the list every year for the last four or five years. Um, I, I had, I didn't do it earlier because I was kind of waiting for the perfect time. Then I realized there's never a perfect time. The perfect time is now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also it's expensive. So I had to save money and, you know, be able to do that. Mm. Um, but yeah, so I, I have the shoes with me uh, today. And basically what we learned how to do at this, at the shoe surgeon school is um, we, we, make these from scratch so this is not in it like a factory jordan one this was a is a jordan one that i stitched and glued and cut together so it's a a reconstruction deconstruction class and in my opinion you know my uh my favorite fashion brand is kid super i think they're the goat uh the shoe surgeon is the goat as far as sneakers are concerned so to be able to go take his class and learn from him Uh, What's really cool is I'm going to be able to take what I've learned and apply it to cleats too. So like as an example, I can get a Louis Vuitton bag and I can cut it up and I can, and I won't mess with the integrity of the cleat. I'll just, for those I do, would sew it on top of it, but I can make a Jordan one Louis Vuitton bag cleat, which is a lot different than painting. It probably lasts longer as well. And it's a a higher ticket item, Mm -hmm. right? So really just like the next evolution of what I'm doing and, uh, my love for sneakers is one of the things that got me started with all this. Um, so just, it's a four day course. They teach you everything on how to make this. So we, I stitched this all together with the sewing machine. And, uh, I mean, I, I'm kind of, I was at a loss for words as far as what that, what that experience meant to me and, and how incredible that was. I really can't say enough good things about it. That's fine. That's uh, so with Nike, they're the biggest shoe company of all time slash in the world. Can anybody just go and paint on their shoe or tear their shoe apart and put different stuff on it and like put the say you wanted to do the Travis backwards swoosh before Travis? Like, can anybody do that or do you have to like get an okay from Nike or how does that work? Yeah, so there's certain rules. Um, like the the surgeon team has a really good relationship with Nike. Mm-hmm. Nike would go and visit their facility every month or so, right? So they have a really good relationship. What you can do, you can paint on them for sure. That's, they don't care about that. That honestly, it pushes their brand, really, Mm because people are painting on Nikes, not painting on Adidas or whatever else, right? Um, As far as the ones that are handmade, as long as it's like an artist's rendition and it's it's limited quantities where it's handmade, Mm -hmm. you're fine, right? Now, can you go to a factory and have it mass produced. No, that's where you'll, you'll get into some trouble. Um, I do at some point plan on putting out like a signature shoe. Um, and what like, you know, like cool Kai, he took the Nike check and put it a lightning bolt. He got sued by Nike because it's the same silhouette. But if you change the silhouette about 30%, you can get around that. So there are ways to do it for sure. But as far as, um, the one-offs or something like this or exchanging out the materials, whatever, that's that's pretty okay. So how is it at that point, how is it if you, 
with, um, I guess, like, what's it called? Like, if we do a Texas logo and the university sees that shirt, they're like, no, you can't sell that. You can't wear that. How has it been like that? Like, if you just put, like, I don't know, the Austin FC logo made some shoes and, like, you wore them. Is that, like, can you, since you have a connection with Nike, are you able to do that, or is that something completely different? So that's different because um, because it's art, right? Mm-hmm. If it's something that you paint, I think that the rules are a little bit different. I'm not 100% sure on that. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, you see people all the time do a painting that'll have, like, a Louis Vuitton print that they painted on it or something yeah. like that, right? Mm-hmm. People do that all the time. So I think as long I think the artist's rendition is kind of the the words in there that make that part of it okay. Um, you know I I haven't had any trouble with Nike. I don't I don't think that I will. Mm-hmm. Um, but as uh, you know, because the surgeon talked about that stuff a little bit, and he just said they have a really good relationship with them, and you know I really they're they're kind of helping advance the brand too because Nike's not 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 going to make some of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? yeah, because it's like super custom and it's like literally one-on-one like it's coming from your brain or other artists brains you know that you're that are there working on the stuff so and uh i talked about the or we talked about the painting that i did for russ Mm -hmm. back in 2018 so when i was living in denver i go to red rocks a lot red rocks is the greatest music venue on the planet russ had a show there so i did some custom jordans for russ that i got to give to him at red rocks which is pretty cool because when I gave him the painting, I wasn't doing sneakers at that point or cleats. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of a full circle. Like, Russ is my guy. Got to link up with his management team and those people again. Um, and actually, when I went to the Surgeon Academy, I had this idea of what I was going to make in my head already. Because it's the same color scheme, less details of paint and stuff, but the same color scheme as the shoes that I did for Russ at Red Rocks. And uh, the, the tour that Russ was on was called The Journey is Everything. And that's like honestly words that I've that I've lived by, um, and so when I when I did the so again the same color scheme as the the ones that I painted for him, so the blue the light blue on the outside represents the daytime, right? Or the the positives the high points along your journey, right? The good times, and then on the the inside is the black panels, which represents the night or the dark or the tough times on the journey, right? And these are special to me because they remind me to stay present and to to not focus on the destination, but to focus on the journey, right? Like I have really huge goals with this, but if six years ago you said, hey, you got to do in six years cleats for the entire LSU baseball team when they win the national championship, and you got to work with Dave Portnoy, and you got to work with Kid Leroy. I said, how do how do I do that, right? But I just focus one day at a time. You know, I stay where my feet are. And I try to be present. So these represent the journey. And then I even have on this on the back tab, this half is white, which represents the moon, and this half is yellow, which represents the sun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, fire. That's fire. So so you know, these are obviously like very special to me. And I'm gonna frame these and make an art piece so that I'm just always reminded. Again, to stay present, to stay on the journey, and to just like keep doing my thing, and I'll get there. Mm-hmm. Right? I don't have to worry about what comes next or when it blows up or anything like that. I just gotta, like I said, keep doing my thing. Those are fire. I like that. What are some of the um, biggest things that you learned while being there? I mean that that you can do anything. I mean, I already knew that, right? But the Dom, the surgeon, started making shoes 10 years ago. Now he's got this insane brand, and they've got 40,000 square feet downtown L.A. It's like a fantasy factory. And then he gets to share that with someone like me, right, who he's been a big inspiration for me. Mm -hmm. And that also just taught me that I can inspire other people to do that as well, right? So, um I mean, I'm, I'm really like at, at a loss for words about what that experience was. In my opinion, anybody that, that likes sneakers or fashion or whatever and is able to take that class, I highly recommend it because for me, it was, it was life-changing. Can anybody go and take it or is it something you have to pay for? So it's just How's expensive. It it's just, yeah. expensive. <laughs> it's just expensive. expensive. Yeah. Uh, now, they have like limited spots. Um, I th- I'm sure they, they vet people, whatever, but yeah. Yeah. If, if you pay for it, you can take it. Gotcha, gotcha. So... You come back from there, um, obviously, 
me and you met at the collective. We had talked, you know, through Instagram and stuff, but I tell him all the time about the collective, like some of the people I met from there. I mean, just, just a quick list. Like I met Austin, Matt Choi, you, Jay Hills, grateful for like everything he's done. Everybody there, like it's truly a social performance club. Like you're going there to get elite working out, recovery, all that stuff. But people like us that are trying to do something similar, change your life, create their own journey. I feel like if you have the money and if you're able to go for like a young entrepreneur standpoint, I feel like it's the place to be in Austin. Um, I'm curious to like hear what you think about the collective and like, cause I mean, we knew we'll text and we we're talking about like elite week, all the guys here, like, I mean, me and you meeting each other. I was at the collective that day when Jamar was there, you pull up and you were just like, where, where, where does stuff like this happen at? You know? So talk, talk to me about that. Yeah. And you know, I'm lucky cause as soon as I moved to Austin, I think a week later, uh, two, two of my buddies were like, dude, you got to check out Collective. And actually, these guys are actually, they are investors in Collective. So they know Jeremy. And um, I just, I went to one of the public events that they do, right? Or the public workouts that they do. Um, and then, and Jeremy was there. And I just, I went and talked to him, you know, introduced myself, told him what I do. And asked if he had 30 minutes to sit down with me so we could talk about it. And... Uh, yeah, he Jeremy's such a great guy. Yeah. And he's so busy. So busy. He he pulls out his phone, he's looking at his calendar. He's got every 15 minutes marked off, right? And he's like, Yeah, we could do next Wednesday at 1 30. So, you know, I've I've learned when to um, reach out to people and when to just show up. Yeah. Right. And, mm-hmm. you know, I learned a lot working with athletes and whatever else. Yeah. But I remember the the night before uh, that we were supposed to meet. On his Instagram story, he's in Atlanta or something. It's like mm-hmm. three in the morning. I'm like, dang, I wonder wonder if he remembered about the meeting. Mm-hmm. Well, then I wake up the next morning at 7 a.m. He's on an airplane back to Austin. I'm like, oh, this, this guy's, he's yeah. got it. Um, but they've been so good to me. And uh, to get that cosign, so to, so to speak, yeah. is, is really special. Mm-hmm. Um, the The place is unbelievable. I mean, it's... It's expensive, but like, I not not even for people that are like I'm doing stuff that my business directly is related to it, mm-hmm. right? But even for people that it isn't, I think every dollar you spend at at Collective, you'll make back, mm-hmm. right? With yeah. the networking and the friends and the memories and mm-hmm. just it's a really special place. I've never seen anything like it. And as I was developing like my love for Austin that was like the stamp of like, this is where I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. This is like the community I want to be a part of. There's so many other like-minded people. And then they've, like I said, they've been so good to me to allow me to go network with the players. And, you know, my goal is like, I don't, I don't like handouts, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't want them to give me this and me not be able to pay it back. Mm -hmm. So the two things that I want to do is first all the athletes. So like I met Deshaun Watson at elite week. And he was like, yeah, let's do some cleats, run it through my agent and Jeremy. You said, cause you said you were Jeremy, right? And I was like, yeah. And so I, I mentioned it to Jeremy. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna reach out to him for you. Right. That is not like a small thing to mm-hmm. me. Yeah. And so what I'm going to do to repay that is first, the guys that I do cleats with that I meet through collective, I'm going to go so crazy with it that they're going to be like, yo, Jeremy, thanks for linking me with Mike. I'm gonna do some really good work and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm just going to do a great job with them, right? That's the first thing. And the second thing is I want to do something to also promote what Collective has done for me, whether that's art pieces for the facility or spreading the word or being an advocate, mm-hmm. right? And then just like honestly like being a good dude, being a good person, showing up to a lot of the stuff that they do and being like a part of that community because it's it's so special, right? And I've honestly never seen anything like it. Um, but again, that was like the the stamp or the you know, the final thing that I needed where I was like, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be. And that's one of the reasons that I moved here. The universe was, was getting me here for something like that. That's yeah. fire. Yeah. yeah. Collective's crazy. Cause yeah. I've only been what, twice. Yeah. Twice. So Kenny had, they had a, uh, the, when they had the store to the yeah. connect, they and did then, like a grand opening. And, then, uh, and then G one wanted to, yeah, I've been twice and it's, 
It's it's a dope place. Yeah. Yeah. At what location are you at, are you at? So I live downtown on West Sixth. So, so you go I go to the, the yeah I'm going to the South, south location. location. But they do a lot of the training at the North. Mm-hmm. So I'll I'll pop in here and there. Yeah. Um. But just uh, you know, and then they do the social events at the North one yeah. too. But it's a lot bigger. That's what I was telling him because yeah, I, I started off at the South one and I wasn't going as much as I'd like because it's like I worked re- remote most of the time. But the couple of days I was in office, I would just hit it on the way home. But now that they have that one. Try to be in there as much as possible, even if it's working in there, just like showing face, like where the OP dad hat, like I go up to Jay Hills, like seeing the brand, like people seeing that. I feel like people like hit me up all the time. Like, hey, like uh, I saw you had a so-and-so on like on your platform. Like, what do you do? And then you kind of strike that conversation and stuff. So I just like I said, just try to be in there as much as possible and just pay it for it. Like I advocate to him, everybody we meet. I'm like, that's the place to be. Like it just kind of puts you in that mindset, like trying to be striving to be like certain people putting yourself in the room like i mean that's what you want so yeah and that's that's honestly how i've been for like i want people to promote my stuff Mm -hmm. like i want my friends and my homies like strangers like I, i want people to like it and promote it right and i do that for other people too so i mean like like my favorite clothing brand kid super Mm -hmm. right i've put 500 people in a kid super now they don't need that because they just Mm -hmm. Column just did the men's line for Louis Vuitton. Like they're good without me doing it. Yeah. But I'm doing it anyway because I love it so much. Yep. Right. And I w- and I want to promote stuff that I, that I care about. And mm-hmm. collective is one of those things yeah. where it's like I'm always going to talk about that. When yeah. people ask me where where I work out, I say at the best gym in Austin. Mm-hmm. Right. Because that's it. It is what it is. It is. Yeah. 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 You and uh, well, Boot Up Customs and Dreamer are going to do some dope things yeah. out of out of collective. Yeah, I got some together and, together. and separately. Yeah. And do some dope things. Y'all got great minds. Y'all got great head on your shoulders, and you're gonna do some dope things. Well, I mean, there. like, where else can you meet people that are doing the same things like mm-hmm. that, right? It, it, you can do it; it would just be significantly harder. Yeah, right. And you really know, you really never know who's gonna be hitting yeah. bench press next to you. No, nah, you, you just, the, Matt. Matt literally said that. Like, you literally don't know. Like, someone's gonna be doing seventy five dumbbell press with you and have a crazy network, you know? And you're just like sweating with them, grinding with them, like. It's a mutual thing, you know. People yeah. see that, so and it's easier for those at top athletes to go in there because the type of gym it is. Mm-hmm. So that, that's and an Austin's awesome just a dope place yeah. too. Yeah. Like just a, a good, place. a good little summer spot. Well, and it's funny because it is an exclusive thing, but it's like the most inclusive, yeah. exclusive that thing. I that was I've ever just seen. about to say because, <laughs> like, yeah. like, like what you said, like where do you find that? It's really exclusive. Like you just, if you I told you, hey, do you want to go work out uh, at? This gym, just say Dak Prescott's there right now. Mm-hmm. You're like, how the hell did we get into that? Mm-hmm. But like, there you can. Mm-hmm. That's that's the. When crazy I, thing I about personally, it. I personally like that it's also a little bit like smaller than like an Alpha Land or somewhere else. Yeah, because I don't want three million people to be yeah, at the gym exactly. Around there. Exactly. So, but again, it's the most inclusive, family exclusive thing that I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. Yeah. Um, I guess uh, you kind of mentioned some people earlier, but uh, actually, I'll, I'll ask that in a little bit. What are what kind of is the direction you see Boot Up Customs going? So, I mean, me and you've talked. Um, you talked about doing some clothing, and I want to do some clothing with you. But I guess, like, kind of besides the cleats and stuff, what is some of the stuff you got planned? Yeah, um, I got some crazy stuff planned, mm-hmm. man. And uh, as far as where where I see boot up customs going in the future, uh, and I say this humbly, but I want to change the entire game. Like I want to be I want to be one of the greats. And um, right now, my skill set as an artist, I would say it's right here. Okay, now I started it was here. Now I'm here. Mm-hmm. But what makes me different is my ideas are up here, right? So. What I need to do is I need to get I need to keep working and keep doing my thing to get the skill set to match the ideas, and if I do that, I will be one of the best. Um, so that that really is, and again, humbly, um, I want to change the game. I want to push the envelope. You know, I'm doing stuff with sneakers and with cleats that people haven't done before. I have an art piece in my crib right now with game worn cleats from Dylan Cruz, a signed baseball with my logo like on turf, it's unreal. Nobody's ever done that before. So I just wanna, you know, I have a lot of great ideas. I wanna just keep pushing the envelope with that. 
Um, and again, like, you know, like I talk about with the journey, right? Is I just, I need to be present and just keep working and take it one day at a time, not focus on the end result. Um, as far as like specific projects, um, I'm working with a lot of NFL teams this year. I have a project coming out with Olivia Dunn pretty soon, some custom Jordans. Um, I'm doing all under the umbrella of Boot Up Customs, but a clothing line. So I've got hoodies and some Jordans coming out for sale to the public, which I'm really excited about. But T-shirts, hats, you name it. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to have a clothing line, but the biggest problem with having a clothing line is is having the audience to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, I have basically a built-in audience because the athletes are wearing my cleats in the game. And then I'm gonna give them the gear too. And I don't I don't like calling it merch yeah. because it's fashion, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is gonna be high quality, artistic, like fashion pieces, but under that same umbrella. Um, but you know, really excited about that because I have the audience because of all the special athletes and projects I've done with those guys. So who are some of your like biggest artists inspirations? Cause I mean, you mentioned a few people earlier. Um, I'm trying to think uh, like kid, like was it kid super, yep. right? Kid super. And then, uh, I'm a big, like, I, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm gonna be like Cole Bennett, lyrical lemonade type of guy, just cause like the videos and stuff. So like, who are some of your inspirations? So, um, definitely kid super is my favorite like artist so he he paints and then like kind of incorporates his paintings into his clothes um it's the best clothing brand on the planet right now in my opinion um they're insane like i said they uh the main guy just did uh, the men's line for louis vuitton which is and they started selling t-shirts at their high school in brooklyn right so that's, that's crazy these guys aren't aren't fashion um royalty right they didn't they weren't given this they they built it all from scratch um another another thing that i that i would say as far as inspiration is like the athletes that i work with because I, I work with some like pretty high pro profile people mm -hmm. and that just makes me better i try to be a student i try to learn from all those guys you know what what do all of the people that i work with have in common they work their ass off right all the athletes anybody that i'm working with like you can't get to that point if you don't put in a crazy amount of work. So I try to take inspiration from that as well. And then um, music, obviously, is I've got music on 24-7. And then, um, you know, Baton Rouge has a really cool art community. And, you know, it really starts with, with Jacob Zuma, who I talked about earlier. Um, and something that we're trying to do is... W there's there's several artists like uh, my guy Chuck Bro. I always forget to to mention Chuck when I tell my story. When I did the shoes for Skylar Mays, he gave me my first airbrush and compressor. I didn't really know anything about it, right? And he had used it once or twice and then didn't need it and just gave it to me. Um, Jacob's cousin Dilo is does an, an insane pop artist. Um, I know a bunch of artists in Louisiana and in Baton Rouge specifically that are doing really well and we all grow together, right? Like the more of a art scene we can make in the city, like the better for all of us. So I get inspiration from those guys too. Um, you know, just the people around me. Um, but kids super, as far as like the art stuff and, and then Jacob, I would say would be like the, the biggest two. Oh, yeah. That's fire. Um, last thing for me, um, I don't know we have left, but, it's hard to choose from just i guess just three people that you would want to collab with which athletes or kids super or um uh, big brands like louis vuitton but like just three people you'd want to collab with even artists yeah so the first one is is definitely joe burrow and i make this joke like joe burrow if you're listening <laughs> <laughs> um joe burrow for sure that's easy um, and, and honestly, that's just a matter of time, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm willing that into existence. Mm -hmm. Like it's already sort of in the works, but yeah. like, I just got to keep, got to keep going. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't know if there's a specific name, but like my favorite rappers are guys that like, I want to work with like another manifest manifestation thing. I have something in the works to do with Post Malone, right? Um, I want to get. 
more of a cosign from Russ. Like, I want to do Russ's album art one day. Mm, and so what, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep doing our projects with him, for him, whatever, mm -hmm. until I get to that point, mm -hmm. right? Until I go to his crib and drop off a giant painting that's his album art. Um, that's two. Well, and just, just like the musicians and, and people I like. Um, but then I guess the last thing is I want Boot Up Customs to become synonymous with LSU sports. So I already feel like I am the guy, but I want to be undeniably the guy with LSU. You want to be like the tinker of Jordans for LSU? Yeah. That'd be fun. Basically like, that's an, oh, okay, so that real quick, that sparks another question. I guess too, like, um, do you keep up with like recruit? I'm pretty sure you do. You're diehard, but like you keep up like recruiting and stuff yeah, for football. Yeah. Like, yeah. So just seeing like these kids and stuff commit. And I guess when they sign that dotted line and roll, like, um, how are you like building those relationships with the younger guys? I'm curious. Yeah. I mean, and really Instagram and like I'm at yeah. the point now where we, I have so many mutual followers with yeah. all these people that if they look at my page, they're probably going to follow me yeah. back. Right. Um, and then, you know, it's just like being supportive, like, Something that I really, like, something I notice for sure, I notice who shares and comments Same. and likes all my stuff. <laughs> Same, bro. Like, it's obvious. And what's something that's, like, there's, it's, a like, Catch-22, it's, like, a double-edged sword where it's, like, I have some homies that are, like, that I'm close with that don't really do it, mm -hmm. and I want them to sometimes. But then I have, on the other side, all these strangers, people that I've never met who mm -hmm. I don't follow, who I will never probably meet, who show me the most love that anybody ever could. Mm -hmm. But I, I know, especially at the point that I'm at now, like I, I posted the other day, uh, J. Cole posted like on Twitter. He's like, I got 502 followers. Mm -hmm. Like that's not a lot for a lot of you people, but like that's huge to me and I'm thankful for every single one of them. Mm -hmm. And I feel that, right? Because I just started taking social media seriously, mm -hmm. right? Because I didn't know that this was going to be something that I actually could do full time mm -hmm. one day. Um, but I take note of that. And so I try to, now you don't see everything. The algorithm, it, algorithm isn't perfect, mm -hmm. right? But if it's a new recruit that I, that I want to have a relationship with or whatever, I'll link with them on social media. I will, um, engage with their posts. Mm -hmm. I'll tell them to keep it up and mm -hmm. I'll, you know, and yeah. I, I like sending DMs where it's like, Hey dude, I'm excited for us to work together one day. Yeah. And just stuff like that. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. fire. Um, how, do, how does it work? Because like back in the day, once you like got a scholarship, like you, you couldn't receive anything while you're in mm -hmm. high school, or yeah. like the coaches couldn't buy you stuff. But yeah. since like NIOs in the picture, how does can you while they're still in high school, can you like still give them stuff or work with them or anything? To be honest, I'm not too sure. I mean, I've heard the thing is NIL is like super new too, so like it's kind of like just wild west i would say right now like i feel like there's you can get stuff early there's uh kids that have agents at like 17 so yeah it doesn't yeah. it doesn't affect their eligibility yeah but i'm also like i have to turn projects down mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. so i don't i can't even do the the high school project yeah because right? right now i'm just at the point where you know like i've had other sec baseball players reach out to me and it's mm -hmm. like i would love to but that's not going to advance like maybe one day maybe if i hire like, other artists mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to work with i don't know if i plan on doing that because another another thing that's different for me there's there's where most people where most sneaker artists or cleat artists make their money is they want to do a high volume of cleats i don't have any interest in doing that my projects are special they're intimate right they're the things that i hand pick to do so that's why I'm doing like the clothing line and the other things where people, if they want to support me, mm -hmm. they still have a way to do it. Exactly. But I don't, I don't have the time or the energy or it doesn't really align with what I'm doing to just take all kinds of projects. So I keep mine a little bit more targeted, a little bit more specific. And then as those guys go through the program and, and get to the point where it's mutually beneficial to do, um, then we'll do it. Yeah. The other thing too with that is that not everybody has like the same vision on the shoe that you have on the shoe. So like you may see like, oh, I want to do this shoe for Joe Burrow. You see it one way, but you hire an artist and they see it another way. And it's like, that's not aligning with the vision that I want for the shoe. And that's like the hard part about it is like with hiring artists. Yeah. And, you know, I like, I like that it's a one man show. Right. Now I say it's a one man show. It's not. I got, I got a lot of people behind me. Right. I've got a lot of athletes like Dylan and Paul and 
um, all these guys that I've worked with, I can't do it without them, right? And without them posting my stuff and without all the support from my friends and family and the people around me. But right now, as far as like employees of Boot Up Customs, it's just me. And um, as far as the art side, I probably plan on keeping it that way. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I am the brand, mm -hmm. right? Like I want to be the brand. Um, so just me right now. Yeah, yeah. that's facts. Um, that's it for me. I don't know if you have. Um, that's it for me. Um, do, do you have, what, are, what are your goals for remaining of the year? Yeah, um, I, I got to get ready for football season. Um, I've got. I wish I could say a little bit more about yeah, some of this stuff, sure. but yeah. I've got some insane stuff. We can talk about it off camera. Yeah, um, got some crazy stuff planned. Getting football season going. Uh, the stuff for the LSU women's basketball team when they drop the banner uh, for the national championship. I have in September um, my first big release to the public with the hoodies. I can show you guys that too. It's they're unbelievable. Um, Learning, learning Shopify and just like kind of getting my ducks in a row for Same. being able to do all that kind of stuff, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, and, you know, like I said, it's, it, I just want to always be present and continue to work and not worry about the things that I can't control, right? I like being in control, but just do my thing and do it every day and be undeniable and keep knocking at that door and then... I mean, when was the last time you went 100% at something and it didn't work out at least Facts. somewhat well, mm -hmm. right? So that's the mindset I try to keep. And um, boot up, baby. Boot yeah. up. Boot up. Um, love what you're doing. I mean, you got a great thing going. Um, I love what you're doing with the cleats. They tell a story. They have meaning behind them. Um, mm -hmm. They have passion behind them. Mm -hmm. Like you said earlier, especially with LSU, like no one could tell it like you can because you've been there for 30 years. Die hard fan. Um, so future is great for you. I know it is. Yeah, you're you're going to sure. do some big things. Um, we're going to see your cleats on TV about the biggest, baddest players in the world. Could be LeBron shoes one day, too. Who knows? I, I don't like LeBron. Could be LeBron, too. But, yeah, sure. um, yeah, you're doing a great thing. Um, yeah, you're doing a great thing. Again, thank you for taking time out today and coming on the show. Really appreciate it. I love hearing you, your story. Um, it's something different, a different avenue. And I yeah, it's just always cool to hear stories with like people who are creating something. It's like art like this. Um, because it's for one, it's not easy. Um, for two, it, it just it, it it it's hard to like I said, for you it was different because you don't mind putting your stuff out there, but it's hard for people to create something and show it to the public because you don't know what you're gonna get from it. And nobody likes to be like told, Oh, that's not that good or that's ugly. Um, but um no, everything you're doing is dope. All your cleats are dope. Like I said, the shoes you did for Trey, fire. Um, the tank shoes, fire. <laughs> um, but yeah, hopefully I can see them on some UT players this year. Yeah, um, sure. that'd be cool. Do you have any shout outs you want to give before we hit this off? Anything for us? Well, you know, I gave most of them kind of as we yep. went. Just yep. like, you know, all the people that have supported me, um, it's it's really special. I think what I'll, what I'll close with um, well, thank you guys, obviously. Appreciate you, bro. For um, you know, as soon as you asked me, I'm like, yeah, yeah. hell yeah, I'm going to do it. Um, for because, because I like you, because this is dope, mm -hmm. because it's great practice. Like, I love this kind of yeah. stuff, mm -hmm. right? If, if anybody ever wants to talk to me about my art, like, I'm going to talk about it. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, you know, I love it. Um, I think the main thing is, is just like, I'm, I'm so grateful every single day to wake up. And like have this and like no matter what else happens whether it's financially or in my personal life or like whatever else it doesn't matter because i've got this dream it's alive and well and i know how special it is like you're saying to to be able to do it right and i don't take that for granted um so i'm just gonna like just try to keep being a good dude and, and keep doing my thing and uh excited to to see where it takes it and yes like super grateful to everybody that supported me along the way like i will not forget it Heck yeah. When you're a good person, the world gives back and it shows. Um, where can they find you at? What are all your socials for everything? Yeah. So my main Instagram account um, is get.like.mike. Um, I do have boot up customs Instagram handle as well. It's, it's a little under construction, a little outdated right now. I still have a lot of, I'm going back through all my projects 
and remaking reels and remaking TikTok mm -hmm. videos and reposting all that stuff because I have so much content that mm -hmm. it was impossible to post it all at once, mm -hmm. right? So I'll have both of those, but I, I post the same things kind of on both of them. And then I'm on TikTok under Boot Up Customs and Twitter as well. Gotcha, Sounds gotcha. good. Sounds good. We'll have <clears throat> all that information down below. Uh, go give them. Go give them a follow. Go check out the stuff. Like I said, dope stuff. If you like seeing custom cleats, go check them out. But that'll do it from your boys over here at Opinionated. We'll catch y'all guys next time. Peace. Peace.